Are you sick of watching free educational videos online? Don't you wish you could forgo a small percentage of your salary monthly in exchange for additional resources and learning materials? Well, you're in luck. Try Patreon. Sign up today to support the efforts of your favorite YouTubers and content creators. Tens of people are already reaping the rewards of their patronage, and you're invited to join them. Link in the description. So I recently received a request to do a bass lesson on my own playing, and I'm happy to oblige because it's all about me. Me, me, me. No. So I've been asked to give a bass lesson on my improvisational approach to John Cole Trains Mr. PC, and it's a video I posted back in 2017. So before we take a look at the solo, I think it's probably best that we actually go back in time a little bit to when I was in music school. When I was in music school, I never really liked to solo like a bass player. You know, I always felt that that the bass player sounded like they were playing a bass line when they played a solo, and I just didn't want that in my own playing. And I was always really attracted to horn players, particularly saxophone players. I just really liked the lines that they played. And probably the first influence on my own solo approach was Hank Mobley, and particularly his album Soul Station. When I first learnt about bebop jazz, I just loved the sound. I loved the way that they played the lines that they did. And so I was really hooked on Hank Mobley's Soul Station album. I transcribed many of the solos from that album and learnt to play them on the bass by memory. That was in my third year of uni. When I got to my fourth year of uni, which was an extra year, I looked into the playing of Dexter Gordon, and I really, really liked his playing a lot. It was like Hank Mobley, but even better. That might actually be sort of like a heresy thing to say, I don't know. And it was the Dexter Gordon album, Bite in the Apple, that had a really big impact on me. I actually learned to play many of the solos on that album from memory on the electric bass, and I got so much out of that practice that it just came into my own playing, and I started to play those types of lines myself. And it was during this long process of learning these saxophone solos that I tried to imitate the sounds that these horn players were getting. They articulate notes in a very, very different way on the saxophone compared to the bass, of course, because they're playing notes with their mouths and also with their fingers. So I had to try to find ways to actually get those same types of sounds on the electric bass. And so to do that, and, as, and you'll see this as we look at the solo, I use lots of things like bending notes, I use hammers and pulls to get a nice legato sort of sound, and that also means that I can play lines really fast. And we'll talk more about that as we go through, but just that's just to set the scene of the way that I'm thinking about this type of approach in jazz. Just a few things to talk about with regards to my sound on my bass. I have the action set reasonably low, which makes playing hammer-ons and pull-offs and those types of articulations a lot easier. Also things like slides and vibrato, which I make use of a fair bit. A low action is also important when you're playing really fast passages with lots of eighth note runs and those types of things. So have your action set fairly low if you want to play in this style. So now we need to talk a little bit about the form of Mr. PC. It's a minor blues in the key of C minor. And we need to talk about the scales that I'm using during this particular solo. So since we're in the key of C minor, of course a big one that I'm using is the C minor scale. A secondary one that I'm using is the relative major, E flat major scale. A secondary scale sound that I'm using is the C Dorian mode, which gives us that A natural note in the key of C minor, which is a very nice note to have in there. And I'm also making use of the C Blues scale. And 
I'm also using the B flat Mixolydian mode. Each of the scales that I just played is obviously just one left hand shape that you could use. There are many that you could use. That's for a different lesson, not this one. But while we're on the topic of modes, I think it's important to talk about the chords and what notes sound good on them and what notes you should avoid. Of course, on every chord in this chord progression, the chord tones will of course sound good. C minor, C, E flat, G will sound good, F minor, and we can talk about all the chords, but chord tones will always sound good. On minor chords, flat nines should be avoided. They just don't really sound good. Flat 13s, typically on minor chords, should be avoided. They're just not great sounds. You can play the natural 13, that sounds nice. So on C minor, an A natural sounds quite good. On major chords and dominant chords, you should try to avoid the 11, because that tends to have a nasty rub with the major third in that particular chord. Now I'm not saying you should never play these notes on these chords. Of course you can play them in runs, in like long eighth note passages. That's totally fine. But for long held notes, you should probably not play them. They're just going to sound a bit too tense. And those are the ones that often actually do end up sounding like wrong notes. So those are the ones that I would avoid. Now, when it comes to the transcription of this solo, this took me a long time. Aside from writing out every note that I played, I also took the time and painstakingly wrote in every articulation, every hammer-on and every pull-off. And they are denoted by the letters H and P on the music. So I'm trying to start my solo from simple beginnings. I start off by playing a line that doesn't have too many notes in it because I want to give myself somewhere to go. And in general, I'm trying to keep the notes that I'm playing inside the harmony of the chord of the moment. So the first chord, of course, is C minor. And we'll start off with, of course, chorus one. And I'm playing a phrase that's based around the notes B flat, C, E flat, F, F sharp, G. So the first sort of six notes or so of the C blues scale. And the phrase sounds like this. And then I toss in this bluesy lick here. And that's the first chorus. Moving on to the second chorus, I actually keep up that same sort of pattern, that same idea with those notes, but I'm slowly starting to add in more notes from the key, trying to outline the chord changes a bit better. So we'll have a look at chorus two now. Outline that A-flat chord. In the third chorus, I'm trying to add in some notes from the key of C minor just to try to get away from that bluesy sound now. And this is a good way that you can try to build your solos. Start off with one particular sound, like a bluesy sort of sound, and then go into more of a modal approach. So I'm really using notes of C minor, the key of C minor, 
but I'm making use of this B flat mixolydian mode sort of shape because all of those notes are also in the key of C minor but my first and last note is B flat this time and so we'll play a little bit of the third chorus now and I play this same passage again lines and I end the phrase I end the chorus with an offbeat passage to lead me into the fourth chorus now <laughs> Chorus 4, we see some more examples of motivic development. Looking at measure 38 through to 40, I'm playing this particular passage over C minor. And when we get to F minor, I'm actually playing almost the exact same passage, but I'm changing it a little bit at, at the end. So it's sort of like a call and response type idea. I play one passage and then I play the same idea again, but with a little variation. In the last line of chorus five, I'm starting to play some longer phrases and introducing the idea of outlining chords specifically. So like the G7 chord, I'm trying to get in that B natural note on the G7, which is the third. And now it's sort of starting to sound a bit more like I'm playing the changes and not just using a mode shape like a blues type sound. If you'd like to watch the full length version of this video, you can check it out on my Patreon page. There you can also download the transcription in both standard notation as well as tab. Thank you very much. See you in the next one.